All right. Somebody should have done that. Okay. Just like Jerry said, there is my title, <laughs> Alternative Models of Review and Selection and What They Mean for Social Psychology uh, as a Science. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I think I'm just going to start with, with what I prepared by way of sort of a a summary. When I took this as an opportunity since, since we were, I was trying to think about the contrast between the models of review and selection that are represented particularly by JPSP and psych science, at least historically, um, and think about what are the dimensions or what is the nature of this dimension that uh, makes those two journals uh, very different forms of uh, dissemination uh, and review and selection. And, and so I thought, well, here's one way to, to think about um, the, the, the different forms of, and at this point we're, we're focusing, as I think Jerry implied on, our existing forms of print publications. Um, and, and of course one of the things I think we're all going to lead into is, you know, what, what are the implications of the, the, the new world of, of online journals and online publications, but sort of put, you know, that as a background context against which we, we take a look at um, our, our current uh, most um, uh, uh, re representative publications. And, and so I, I made a single dimension out of a multi-dimensional um, uh, phenomenon, but the fact is that I think on many, many factors, these journals that I've used here as, um, as prototypes actually vary in, along the same you know, dimension uh, it, or, or line up on, in the same way on, on multiple dimensions. But I've labeled the dimension pure theory to pure data. And of course, like any uh, bipolar dimension, there's nobody at the pure ends. I mean, the, the extremes uh, don't exist in our, um, in our actual uh, world of, of existing publications, but we can certainly, I think, we would have a lot of agreement on lining up our, our most um, typical journals along uh, that particular dimension. So uh, the um, J SPSP Journal of Personality and Social Psychology Review is explicitly uh, designed to represent theory and in early stages of, of, of data empirical basis. Uh, and, and, and similarly, advances is a little bit is different in the sense that advances is more about reviewing a past program of research and pulling it together in an integrative theoretical way. But both of them are focused on programmatic and theory uh, building um, adventures. And then there's JPSP, which <laughs> I will get a, a little chance to say where I think it falls. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a journal that it, you know, in intent is a, a data journal, it's a research journal, it reports the results of research, but it's heavily conceptual in, in its content. And I'm talking about the current manifestation of JPSB as it's evolved over the last, say, 10 years. And then we can in move down toward journals where the relative emphasis on empirical over conceptual change shifts in the balance of more data relative to conceptual framework. And, and I think psych science falls pretty solidly. And that obviously articles vary in that dimension, but on a whole psych science. And then recently within the, the social psychology journals, I think we've been seeing more and more innovations of his sections of journals like JESP's short reports that are kind of mimicking the psych science model of shorter, more data focused articles. Um, and then we may even be getting close to the pure data end because if the, those of you who have seen the editorial announcements know that the, the new editor of JESP is introducing yet another innovation called Flash Reports, which is going to be even yet shorter and more uh, immediate um, uh, um, uh, reports of, of new studies, um, you know, one study kind of, kind of articles with the focus being on the data. Um, versus the conception, but we don't yet have any pure data. And you know, there there is the specter of um, what is it called? What the, of open access, where people can just post their data, <laughs> you know, and and that's it. And I think for most of us, we're a little uncomfortable at the idea of just un in uh, in un, no moderation at all of what goes into our our dissemination of information. So I think. I think we're all committed to the idea that we want there to be some selection process, some vetting of what gets available to people to refer to as the existing knowledge, uh, ideas, and data in the field. But the question of whether you know we need this this you know 
uh, we're on this full range of pure ideas versus pure data. Um, we really, you know, uh, have the most need right now is, is the question I want to address. But let me sort of speculate about a couple other things that I think define this dimension. So it's not just theory. Another way to think about it is the number of words per data point in the article. <laughs> and it falls very nicely <laughs> along the same dimension. A lot more words for every data, um, for every, every bit of data. So I think of J, JPSB something as requiring, let's see how do I put this, Requiring data support for every point you make and elaborate interpretation for every data point you have. So it's kind of almost an endless cycle of escalation. If you get new data, you need new words. And if you get new words, you need new data. And at some point, people just get exhausted and publish it the way it is. Um, so you are going to hear a little bit. I, I, I've been told by Jerry to, to hold back on some of my critique of the current JPSB model. but. But I, I'm, I'm in good company because I, I read a quote that was attributed to Reed Hasty, so I don't have the origin, but Reed presumably told, uh, described some of this as bloated carcasses. So <laughs> 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 the bloat factor in some of our publications. Um, another way to think about it is a dimension of um, phenomenon and discovery oriented, that is what's new, what's, what's in the data themselves versus theory mechanism oriented. Uh, so it's not just whether it's theory and data, but what are you looking for in the data? Are you looking for mechanisms and, and that, or are you looking for the phenomenon, the behavior? I often go back into the history of social psychology and realize how early exciting stuff was so phenomenon driven. It was the fact that people did things and they behaved certain ways in situations, and that's what was exciting. Um, and not that I'm you know, totally against mechanisms and mediating processes and so forth, but I'd like a, a little, little better balance on the phenomenon side. Another dimension that we've often given a lot of attention to when we think about what are the functions of journals are archival value versus the immediate impact of, a, of, of, of learning about a new piece of journal. You know, what's more important? What's going to be here 20 years from now? Or what you want to know, what, what, what's hot off the press, what might influence your next step in, in your own research program? Uh, and then, it's something that I think there will be a lot of attention to in the, in the succeeding talks, is the nature of the review process that goes along with those different models. Is it an extensive, extended review process, um, or is it um, a quick and, and, you know, with the focus being on immediacy rather than um, uh, 20 years from now <laughs> impact? Okay, so that's, that, that's sort of the orienting thing. I'm just going to raise a couple of questions that I think will lead well into the succeeding thing, so just repeating my, my dimension here so I have something to refer back to. Um, the, the, the whole dimension, going from pure theory to pure empirical research, is I think represented in the other disciplines, the physical and biological science. They have theory journals. They have relatively pure empirical journals. What I don't think they have is so much of the hybrids that we have, the, the, the ones in at the JPSB end of the scale. Um, so I think the question of which of these models is more like other sciences, that is, if we say, you know, that we are a science, what does it mean to be a science? It means to be cumulative, it means to be empirical, it means to be data-oriented. And the question of whether our most prestigious journals match our self-image as a science is something I really think we should give attention to.